thanks for interest from all of you in one of the fastest growing technology area. So I think uh, title explains itself that we are on a path to put the right foot forward to make India a strong electronics and semiconductor product nation. So if you look at basically the journey of India in the last 40 years, right? Uh, in 1980, when India was starting its space program, the nozzle of the rocket was carried upon in a bicycle because the roads could not carry a vehicle. So they have to carry the nozzle of the rocket on the bicycle. And from there, in 2023, we ended up basically landing on the south pole of the moon. So that's the very fantastic progress over the past 40 years which India had made in the technology space. And today if you look, India is continuously moving upwards in the technology space. Uh, the foundation of these things have been put into the programs like Startup India, Digital India, Make in India, India Semiconductor Mission and many such programs which are basically laying foundation for the future growth. And if you look at the impact of these programs, it has helped in creating a very large digital public infrastructure. And what I mean by digital public infrastructure is that we have created platforms like Aadhaar, uh, almost every citizen of India basically uses Aadhaar today for various digital solutions. UPI, which is the online payment system, today India makes basically almost twice as much digital payment and the rest of the world combined. Platform like ONDC, which is basically revolutionizing the e-commerce for the small merchants compared to basically big uh, people like Amazon and Flipkart. Vande Bharat, modernization of the Indian Railway and <coughs> AI platforms like Bhashini, which is one of the best technology to convert any Indian language to any other Indian language. And the impact of all of this, today India is fifth largest economy, soon to become basically third largest economy. We are number one in the digital payments. We are number one in the data consumed across the world, number two in the mobile production, number two startup ecosystem, number third railway, and number two in the road network, right? And the aspiration is that by 2047, when we reach 100 years of country's independence, all of these will become number one in the world. So, coming more specifically to electronics and semiconductor, which is the basically our area of work and expertise. If you look today, India consumes about $200 billion of electronics products and within those products, $40 billion of semiconductor is used. Uh, if we fast forward to 2030, that electronics consumption goes to $500 billion and the semiconductor consumption goes to $135 billion. And moving to 100 years, I think it goes to a staggering number of $3 trillion of electronics consumption and about $800 billion of semiconductor consumption. If you compare it with today's market, today the worldwide semiconductor consumption is about $600 billion, right? So by 2047, we will be almost double of that uh, number. And if you look at the impact of this thing, today electronics is about 5.8% of the GDP. By 2047, it will become more than 10% of the GDP. And in terms of basically employment, it has a potential of creating 10 crore, which is basically, uh, how much is it in terms of million? 100 million basically employment, uh, direct and indirect, in electronics and semiconductor industry. Now, 
if we look at this market as a opportunity, then we have a 200 billion dollar market today, which is going to become 500 in 2030. And Indian products, which are by Indian companies, Indian brands, and basically where the IP and the revenue accrues in India is less than 10% of this 20, 200 billion dollars, right? If we put the right technology solutions, right pollution, and build the right ecosystem, and aspire to take 33% of the market share of what we consume by 2030, then it becomes a $166 billion of opportunity for Indian companies, Indian entrepreneurs, Indian startups, and everybody else, which is a staggering number, right? Similarly, on the semiconductor side, we consume $40 billion of semiconductors. We are going to grow this to $135 billion. Today, we, Indian chips, basically, which power these electronic devices, the contribution is less than 1%, right? If again we aspire to become 33% of this uh, consumption, then it creates an opportunity of $45 billion. And it's not just manufacturing, it, what I'm talking about the products, right? Uh, and how basically the overall ecosystem looks like which we need to build, we are in the process of building. The products for any domain is the leading thing which basically creates the opportunity for manufacturing and also creates basically uh, the jobs and opportunity for the talent and research. So three pillars of the uh, any ecosystem including electronics and semiconductors products which are the driving force, manufacturing ecosystem and the research and talent ecosystem. And we need to put the right ingredients to build world class products, world class manufacturing and world class research to have a, to make India a strong electronics and semiconductor nation. For that we need long term policies, government support and all other ingredients which takes to build this ecosystem. Now, <clears throat> coming to where do we stand today in terms of the areas which are growing across the world in the technology sector. So, I think automobile, electrical vehicles, and AIML are probably the fastest growing area, and it impacts basically all the other areas as well. And then we have consumer electronics, telecom, wireless, medtech, clean energy, and space and defense. So these are basically key thrust areas where the industry is growing. Uh, and if we look at basically EV segment, including two-wheeler, three-wheeler, four-wheeler, buses, what Shiva basically talked about, we are looking at almost 24% of CAGR, which is very, very high, not electronics, not semiconductor, not any other technology area other than AI is growing at this pace. So this is a fantastic opportunity for companies, enterprises, innovators, startups to basically take advantage of this. <coughs> now let's look at a electrical vehicle from a basically electronics and semiconductor point of view. As all of you know that electric vehicle is basically battery plus some mechanical and rest of it is electronics, right? So I want to point a specific areas of electronics where which is going to be very important and could be a very strong opportunity for India. See, if you look at the two-wheelers of today, they are typically using the traditional silicon, both for power and basically compute. I think there is an opportunity to leapfrog where we change all the power electronics in electrical vehicles based on the compound semiconductors like silicon carbide and GAN, gallium nitride, right? I think that's an outstanding opportunity. 
India government also has been basically pushing very hard to put up compound semiconductor ecosystem, including products and the fabs and so on and so forth. Although the EV can provide a big base for power electronics based on the compound semiconductor, but the use case basically goes across so many things, right, which are depicted here. And the good thing is that basically, unlike mo mobile phones, right, where the OEMs are not Indian, in this case, your two-wheeler, four-wheeler, and all the other power application, most of the OEMs are Indian. So you are basically opportunity to sell to those OEMs is much better than if I develop a processor for mobile phone. I don't know who I'm, whom I'm going to sell it to, right? Because Oppo, Samsung, Vivo, OnePlus, they're not going to buy from me. But these OEMs are Indian. They will basically probably more inclined to buy basically these semiconductor or compound semiconductor products from India, right? <coughs> I think uh, Shiva asked the question whether the air taxi is a EV, right? I think all transportation is going to be electrical soon, whether it's a basically air, ground, like uh, automobiles, trains, Everything basically sooner or later going, later going to become electrical and that's the opportunity to leapfrog. So drone is another big opportunity for people who are working in the uh, electrical vehicle technology. Uh, in two-wheeler, four-wheeler, it is uh, motor plus battery which is driving the vehicle. Here also motor plus basically battery is driving the EV. So there is a huge opportunity in terms of defense, surveillance, uh, agriculture, entertainment, in all the areas for use the drone technologies. <coughs> Same for the railways, right? I don't think we are using enough electronics in the railways, whether it's a basically semiconductors or electronics. We are not using enough electronics, at least in Indian railways, right? There is a huge opportunity to create the traction using the silicon carbide devices, provide the user experience and entertainment through the electronic devices, provide the safety through basically sensors and other things, right? So again, I consider train also to be sooner or later be electrical vehicles, and that's a huge opportunity too, right? And last, I just want to take two minutes to get your attention, right? <coughs> What was the Delhi AQI yesterday? Anybody knows? 400, right? Which is severely dangerous, right? I think we need to find a solution to this problem. Typically, you can classify the pollution in places like Delhi into two categories. One is because of the uh, smoke and smoke coming from the various sources. Another is dust coming from various sources. These are the two main sources of the pollution. And without going into sources of the pollution, can we make automobile, which is typically victim, which say that if automobile create all this pollution, can we make it a solution? So if you look at the EV, first thing is that we solve the exhaust problem. But we, can we go beyond? Can we use the vehicle to clean up the existing dust? So one way it is not creating additional smoke, but can we, all the technologies in this room and across the country, can we find technologies to use electrical vehicle to clean the air of places like Delhi, irrespective of where it is coming from? So one is stopping, one is cleaning. So I think electrical vehicles can become the agent for both stopping the pollution as well as cleaning the pollution, right? So I don't know what the solution is, but this is a challenge to all the technologies that how we can use this electric computer on four wheels to use it beyond transportation to clean the air in places like Delhi and all across the world. Thank you so much and looking forward to exciting session today.